Indian Rare Earths Corporation, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Department of Atomic Energy. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, mostly unfortunately, these rare earths occur in what are called uh, beach sands or monazite sands or uh, sands which are found in the sandy beaches in tropical uh, regions of the world. Uh, Kerala has a lot of them. Now, these sands contain a radioactive element called thorium, which yes. is essential for our atomic energy program. Now, very unfortunately for rare earth research, the major constituent of those beach sands are cerium and lanthanum and the other rare earths. So, because of this connection with thorium, right from the beginning, this rare earth business became associated, in fact, linked exclusively with the Department of Atomic Energy. So today we find rare earths in other parts of India and there is plenty. There's in the stuff in the beaches of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Jharkhand. There's even bits in parts of West Bengal and the Northeast. So all these matters simply get referred to this Department of Atomic Energy, which then does nothing. Now, second, even if we went through the bureaucracy of DAE, which is terrible because uh, the rare, uh, rare earths, neodymium, wind turbines, energy, they have nothing to do with DAE or radioactivity or atom bombs. They have nothing to do with that. And yet everything goes through that today. Second, uh, between the IAS and the Supreme Court, I don't think anything is possible in this country. It All it takes is a simple PIL and go to the Supreme Court and then just like what happened in Tutsukudi, I mean, copper is nothing. Copper is something which uh, humankind has known for 4,000 years. It's the first metal that was known to man in a pure condition. They were able to block us with copper. But today I tell you that apart from Supreme Court and IAS, which are in themselves insurmountable obstacles, insurmountable, 